Hello, my name is Adam Wokte, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to properly fight as a Lambiosaurus. Now, before we start, I want you to know the Lambiosaurus are a more support focused creature. So, rather than just showing you how to fight to kill, it is more of how to perform the best as a frontliner. As a Lambiosaurus, being on the frontline is a challenge for it in itself. After all, a Lambiosaurus aren't meant to be on the front. Or at least, it's not built for it. In any case, in this video, we'll be going over the following topics. Stay to the end to figure out how you can help to decide which creature are next to be featured in one of these videos. In any case, let's start off with Arsenal. In the first slot, we have Sensibilities, and out of the abilities, we have three options. The first one being Family Chorus. Basically, the ability gives you a buff depending on how many Lampiosaurus or Iguanodons that are in your group. You know, Iguanodons, the creatures are really good at giving thumbs ups, but it requires a group and this video focuses on solo play, so it's not really too relevant this video. Lone Survivor on the other hand, are pretty much relevant this video, and probably out of the senses the best ability to choose from. Musician however, aren't really that useful, so it will be seeing it last note in this video. For frontline, we have two abilities, the first one a dunking kick which are basically just a kick to use in water, and it can only be used in water. It does propel you forward, so it does make you somewhat competent at swimming, but still nowhere near as close to an actual semi-aquatic. The other ability are kick, but the Lambiosaurus are a facultated biped, so is it a kick or is it a punch? For hide, we have four options, the first one being healing presence. In combat, however, it is useless. The next option are just resilient scales, and to be honest, out of all the options, this thing is actually one of the better choices. The third option are just protector, and honestly, it just sounds like you're taking on the job as a babysitter. And the last option are just a Path of Titan's wetsuit. For leg abilities, we have four options, the first one being braced legs. When in uphill, the usual decrease in speed are ignored, and in downhill, your speed are actually boosted which can help in some situation, but I'll come back to that later. The second option is a wife wet dream, and with shove you can force yourself into some creature's butthole. So enjoyable that they will get knocked back from pleasure. Strong legs are just something that exists. For back limb we have three options. The first one being back kick, which, well, kicks backward. It kicks backward. The second options are web feet, which sounds weird on an hadrosaur. Then we have Rodeo Kick, basically an ability that shows you who's the bull and who's the shit. For tail abilities, we have three options, the first one being Armor Tail that doesn't do the name justice. Then we have the Tail Attack that does do the name justice. Then we have the Paddle Tail, which is useful in one singular specific situation, and pretty much useless in every other situation. Then we have the different voice abilities, and I ain't gonna go into detail what the different abilities does, but the combat calls grants you any buffs related to combat, be it to just you and or to your group. The healing calls are basically the same, but more focused on healing, and it also applies to the survival calls. I'll come back to it later, what I suggest to have as arsenal, since it's basically... it is pretty much situational based. Out of the subspecies, I lean towards stamina recovery the most, with health recovery coming in on second place. Unless you want to be a swimming ambulance, swimming speed aren't gonna do you much. As to why I lean towards stamina recovery more than to health recovery, you have goddamn healing calls, you don't need the extra boost. Besides, most of your abilities are stamina draining abilities, so you need the extra stamina recovery to, well, survive. When it comes to terrain compatibility, you would think that a huge open plane would work the best for Lambiosaurus, while not untrue, being in a terrain that has uphill can grant you the advantage in terms of speed. If you have brace and leg equip, you will ignore any uphill speed decline. This means that you'll be able to outrun most creatures in uphill. If your opponents see the difference in speed, they'll probably just give up, seeing that there's no point in giving chase. As for how we can serve you in battle, let's say you're in a fight with a creature who is usually faster than you. If the battle starts moving uphill, then you will see that you'll be able to land a few more hits in situations where you in normal circumstances wouldn't have been able to. If this is not your situation, then I would recommend this arsenal, 
and also recommend that this is your standard arsenal. The tail attack has a better reach and it can be used to keep enemies at a distance. Once the enemies get close enough, that's when you deploy the rodeo kick. Whenever you see the chance, you should attack. This is why also having shove could be a good decision. It can help you land a few combos. For Panzers, I would just back myself into a corner, or in an area where they can't move as easily. For Panzers, I would first try to buckle them off, and while they are in strike zone, deploy the rodeo kick. All in all, it kind of boils down to being able to foresee their next move. Lower tiers are still smaller than you, so you should be able to take them on in a head-to-head -head battle. It is when they attack in group that you should feel threatened, and if you're alone, you're probably dead. Mid tiers are a whole nother story. For beginners, you can't take them on in a head-to-head -head battle. Use your tail and rodeo kicks when you can, and slowly over time ship away their health. Yes, you do more damage with your front limb if you stand on their hind legs, but it's still nothing compared to the damage I put off the other mid tier. If you have a more health advantage, you can afford a head to head battle, but be careful, it is quite risky. You are no tank. Make sure that your healing calls are available, and make it a battle of attrition. You can heal faster than they can, so if you play your cards right, you can win in the long term. I just want to hammer this point down. If you choose to play as a Lambiosaurus, you will be a creature who has a hard time in battles. Defeating those who are made to be on the front line as a support class, it is no easy task and highly risky. Of course you can do the strategy I showed you in the beginning. While it's always fun to kick people off cliffs, those strategies can only be used if you are near a cliff and if there's an enemy that you can easily knock them off. Basically, it's not a go-to strategy. And if you want to try this strategy on Apexes, well, it won't be as easy to knock Apexes around as with mid-tiers. As a matter of fact, I would recommend not fighting Apexes at all. I will admit that during the making of this video, I did not manage to kill any Apexes as a Lambiosaurus whatsoever. The difference in its stats makes it too difficult. Not to mention these are Apexes. They are meant to be on the front line. You as your puny support class? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. If anything, I'm really happy that his support class aren't able to stand any chance against an Apex. And even if you find a way to land a few solid hits on them, you do not have high enough damage up to finish them off. You will be dangerously low on stamina before you get to kill any Apexes. The damage I put on the Apexes, however... Yeah, the only reason you're alive is probably due to the healing calls. The only Apexes you, my friend, might be able to take on are the Apexes who have gotten weaker due to other stronger creatures. It might be a hard pill to solve for Lambiosaurus players, but when did you wish for a T-Rex to be beaten by a prehistoric horse with a fan on its head? A Lambiosaurus aren't even an Apex herbivore, why should it be able to solo an Apex? So to sum it all up, against low tiers, move into a place where they don't have free movement, and try to force them into a head-to-head -head clash, or just hit them whenever you can. Against mid tiers, try to land a few rodeo kicks on them, then run away, heal your wounds and gain more stamina, and then come back for more. Make it a battle of attrition. Try to have a location where you can have uphill on your side, that way it will be easier to make distance. Against Apexes, don't fight Apexes, at least not alone. Make some friends, have them jump the Apex, and if they will allow it, let you finish them off. 
it will bring healthcare to the group and for the Americans watching, you of all people should know how important it is to have good healthcare, right? If you have a specific issue you want me to cover, go to my community post, find my most recent post regarding the matter and all the information should be there. With that, I bid you guys adieu and I will see you guys later. Goodbye!